Hello class, welcome to our lesson number one in topic number three, which is administrative law. In this topic, I want to look at the following uh, matters. One, I want to discuss the concept of uh, separation of powers. I also want to look at the concept of rule of law. Then I will look at uh, natural justice. Then fourth and last, I will also look at the independence. Independence of the judiciary. The independence of the judiciary. Independence of the judiciary. So these are the four uh, matters that I want us to discuss in this topic. So let's begin where we must, and this is the concept of separation, separation of powers. The concept of separation, separation of powers. <coughs> Now, this concept was uh, explained and advanced by a French scholar known as Baron de Montesquieu. Now, Baron de Montesquieu's experience was that the functioning of government is best if the functions are spread, if the powers are exercised by different persons or by different institutions. Montesquieu's fear was that if all these functions were to be centralized, that we have one person or one institution exercising all the functions of government, then the result may have been a tyranny, a dictatorship. So to avoid the possibilities of a dictatorship or a tyranny in government, Montesquieu suggests a system of government that encompasses what we have as this concept of separation of powers. So Montesquieu makes a number of uh, proposals that, number one, that a government, a government be divided, be divided, be divided into three distinct, into three distinct organs. And he goes on to propose that we can have, we have one of these uh, organs as the executive, the executive organ, the second being the legislative organ, the legislature, and the third, the judiciary. That these three be the distinct organs of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Further proposals are that these organs perform separate functions. That the organs, the organs should perform, the organs should perform separate, the organs should perform separate functions. The organs should perform separate functions. And there are suggestions on what functions these organs are to perform. That the executive arm the executive arm should be in charge of administration. That the legislative arm, the legislature, should be in charge of lawmaking or legislating. Lawmaking, what we also are referring to as legislating. Then the judiciary, judiciary should be tasked with the interpretation of the law with the interpretation interpretation of the law should be tasked with the interpretation of the law so the proposal is with hindsight with an imagination that it would have been bad if a single institution was in charge of making law administering the law and uh, uh, interpreting the law that the same maker of the law interprets the law and administers the law, then there is the possibility that we may have dictatorship. There is the possibility that the rule may be tyrannical. So to ensure um, accountability 
in functions, then the proposal is that let's have distinct functions performing distinct uh, roles in government so that we have the executive and the legislature and the judiciary and each of them has been assigned a different role in this case. Now, the idea is that we should not have duplicity of persons uh, in one or more of these organs that you play still as a member of the executive and you're present in the legislature and you're still in the judiciary. In the ideal proposal by Montesquieu, that persons in the executive should have their influence just limited in the executive and are not players in the legislature or the judiciary. The idea is that this system should create what we refer to as a system of checks and balances. That with the distinction of organs and the distinction of roles, then one organ in the playing of their role, they are able to check the functioning of the other organ. We talk about um, the, 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 the checks and balances between these organs. For instance, how is the executive able to check the legislature and the judiciary? Depending on the country you are, because different countries have adopted Montesquieu's proposals to a differing extent, if you begin with our country, Kenya, we have to a greater extent adopted this proposal that in Kenya we have an executive headed by the president, we have a legislature headed by the speaker of the National Assembly, we also have a senate with a speaker, and we have a judiciary headed by a chief justice. And that the Kenyan executive is in charge of administration, the Kenyan, exec uh, the Kenyan legislature is in charge of lawmaking, and the Kenyan judiciary is in charge of interpreting the law. Now, how do we ensure a system of checks and balances in the Kenyan example? How does the executive check the legislature? That uh, we have um, the Kenyan executive comprised of the president, that if the legislature were to make laws that the executive or the laws that would make the functioning of the executive impossible, then we may have the intervening of the judiciary. That should legislature make laws that are considered unconstitutional, unfair in any sense, then any interested person may go to, the, to, to courts and challenge that law as being unconstitutional. We also have the executive arm of government participating in the appointment of officers who serve in the judiciary. For instance, uh, the chief justice is, uh, undergoes a lot of vetting from the legislature. Then the appointment is done by the executive through the president. We have the, uh, the legislature debating the budget that is proposed by the executive. So we find ourselves having a system where each of these organs can check the functioning of the other just to avoid a situation where we have excesses, we have abuse of power by any of these organs. Now, the system that is the separation of powers can also be praised for the fact that it realizes a lot of efficiency in the functioning of government. In this sense, that the persons who are involved in administration, that is the executive, the only thing they do is the administering. So as a result of that specialization, then we result with a lot of efficiency in the functioning of these particular organs. As, oppo as opposed to a scenario where individuals uh, in government who are all involved in uh, administering, lawmaking, and interpreting the law. With this separation of powers, we have specialization, which results into what we are referring to as efficiency in functioning of government. Uh, of course, uh, it will also be uh, uh, fair to acknowledge that with the separation of powers, we may also find ourselves with some bad elements of the separation, where maybe one of these organs feels to be superior than the other, where we may result into a deadlock in the functioning of uh, government. For instance, where one organ frustrates uh, the functioning of the other organ. You can imagine where the legislature does not pass uh, the budget proposals by the executive. It may be impossible for the executive to function. You can imagine where the executive does not release funds uh, to the judiciary it may be impossible for the functioning of the judiciary. You can imagine where a judiciary declares all actions by the executive or the legislature to be unconstitutional. So we may also find ourselves with those negative elements of the separation, but all in all we are saying it is a good thing that when functions of government are separated, then we have uh, efficiency resulting out of the specialization of on, 
on, on specific functions by government that most importantly we create a system of checks and balances where the functioning of one organ can be oversighted by the other organs to ensure no excesses or abuses of powers are visited on the people. So that is the concept of separation of powers. Let us now discuss the second of this concept that is rule of law. Rule of law is a concept discussed by Dicey, uh, who tries to characterize the English legal system as a system based on the rule of law. And the question is, what characteristics does a system based on the rule of law have? And he suggests the following characteristics. He says, in countries, in systems where we have rule of law, then these characteristics will be evident that one, we have the absolute we have the absolute supremacy we have the absolute supremacy of the law we have the absolute supremacy of the law what does he mean by absolute supremacy of the law this means that all actions by government shall be justified by the law shall have their justifications by the law that when any action is taken Let's say an action to deprive you of your personal liberty, actions to deprive you of ownership of property, that action should be justified by the law. That we have done this, we have sent you to prison because the law provided that you should be sent to prison. We have taken over your property because there is a provision of the law that justifies taking over your assets. So absolute supremacy of the law. Number two is that all persons, all persons are subject, all persons are subject to the law. All persons are subject to the law. The idea is no one is above the law. That we shall all be treated to similar legal processes, irrespective of our socioeconomic and political status. That should even the king should even the president be found to have violated the law, then they will be subjected to the same same processes every other person in the country would be subjected to. So they will all going, be going to the same courts as everyone else would be going. They would all be sent to the same prisons as everyone would be going to. And that the process of the application of the law will be similar to all persons. No one is above the law in these countries or in these legal systems that are characterized by the rule of law. We are also saying that uh, the law, uh, the law is a reflection, the law is a reflection, the law is a reflection of the wishes, the law is a reflection of the wishes of the people, the law is a reflection of the wishes of the people that the people participate in the making of the law. They could either be doing so directly or through their representatives. And this would make some sense in this way, that if the law is going to be the most supreme authority in the country, and that we are all going to be subject to the law, then it only makes sense that we be the source of the law, that the law be a reflection of what the people want, that by the same same laws or the same same principles that we all obey, by the same same principles that dictate all that happens to us, that is a reflection of our own wishes as the people. So, Class, on the basis of these three characteristics of, uh, of a system or a country that is based on the rule of law, we are supposed to make a reflection uh, regarding our own country and ask ourselves, are all action taken by the government justifiable under the law? When the government or when we have any persons punished in Kenya, any person uh, arrested in the country, persons who are sent to prison, when we have property taken over, is it justifiable under the law? Is it because there is a provision of the law that provides for such punishment, for such takeover of assets? Are all persons in the country subject to the, uh, the same uh, legal procedures? Do we have persons who are not subjected to law as others are? Is the Kenyan law a reflection of the wishes of the people? 
do the Kenyan people participate in the making of their own law, either directly or indirectly, then you can pass the judgment whether we are a country under the rule of law or any other rule, rule of man or any other rule as you may want to predict. So that is the rule of law. The natural justice is the other concept. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House 3rd Floor, opposite Fire Station.